Uh, next on the list, I want to talk about uh, Glenn Greenwald has left The Intercept. He has resigned from The Intercept. For those of you that might not know who Glenn Greenwald is, he is one of the co-founders of The Intercept, um, a, 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 a avid critique of uh, American imperialism, an avid critique of the uh, the deep state, uh, the uh, uh, privacy issue. Uh, sorry, I had a brain fart there. Um, he has talked a lot about Latin America, what's going on in Brazil, uh, revealing the corruption in, in Brazil. And really, if you look at that and you look at the American um, state of American politics, too, it's like, all right, but yeah, we're, we're, we're heading to becoming Brazil. So uh, why did he resign? Well, there's been a lot of censorship from his own organization in regards to uh, a lot of stuff that he's wanted to publish and the, and the, and the uh, um, cherry on the cake, the, the straw that broke the camel's back is writing about Biden. He was writing about Biden's, uh, the way Biden reacted to uh, everything that came out about Hunter Biden, which is something that I'm going to talk about as well. Um, again, later on this week, I will be addressing this issue of um, Joe and Hunter Biden and why Glenn Greenwald was censored and why Glenn Greenwald, uh, I mean, essentially lost, had to resign um, and, you know, uh, look elsewhere to to be a, a journalist, uh, an award-winning journalist too, mind you. Like, this guy wasn't just like, oh, whatever. Like, no, this guy was like an award-winning journalist. Now, um, the folks at The Intercept, his partners at The Intercept, basically said we can't publish this. It has to be shorter. Uh, and also, let's, let's, not, let's not bring any negative light on, uh, on Joe Biden because that's not what we need right now. Um, you know, that's, th- th- this makes Joe Biden look bad and could, in- could sway the election and he would lose. So we're just not going to publish this and we're just never going to bring this up again. And that level of censorship uh, was um, not something that uh, Glenn Greenwald was going to tolerate. And, you know, he went back and forth by email. And I'm going to, uh, again, later on this week, I'm going to do a little bit of more of a deep dive on, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the, the emails uh, that, the, that he sent back and forth. And he basically said, look, I'm, I have a little bit of carte blanche on, in, in terms of, like, what uh, gets published and I'm, you know, I'm one of the founders, uh, and and this is like important. And you guys are taking a political side, which is not what journalists are supposed to do. Um, and he's had major issues. You know, he has pushed back on uh, people at his own publication. Like he pushed back on James Risen a whole bunch uh, on the whole RussiaGate issue because Risen Risen was a big RussiaGater, and you know, Greenwald was basically like, we just we don't fucking have evidence to make this claim and this is dangerous to do uh and what happened you know Ryzen gets to stay on the Russia Gators get to stay on the 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 the, the people that uh uh push neoliberalism via the intercept get to stay on and this is very dangerous because it just kind of shows like there is political sway uh, in American journalism. And when you come out and speak the truth and say, hey, we have to, we have to hold our leaders' feet to the fire. That is important. And as journalists and as citizens, that's important or else they'll you know, get away with whatever they want. They don't have a social obligation to be good to the people. And right now, I mean, this is a big, this is a big deal, right? And, and Greenwald has been pretty public about why he got let go. He wrote a piece on his Substack. Uh, but I have yet to see any Democrat, anybody from the Biden administration come out and speak on journalistic integrity and, you know, fairness and accuracy and balance within journalism and so on and so forth. They, not, not a peep. Not a peep from them. 
And this isn't like some fringe group, right? I mean, a couple of years, uh, about a year or two ago, there were 700 uh, independent uh, journalist outlets that were just removed from Facebook and Twitter without any kind of warning, and it was like a major censorship. But a lot of them were, uh, a lot of them were smaller. They didn't have the same notoriety um, as Glenn Greenwald and The Intercept. So where where is that accountability, right? You 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 you, you uh, the Democrats screamed and jumped and 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 said, "Oh, this is a, a violation of press freedoms." When Jim Acosta was thrown out of uh, the White House press briefings, Jim Acosta is a fucking shill, by the way, and he's a bad journalist. He's not even a journalist. He's a fucking I don't even know what to call him. Like, he, like, entertainer? I don't really even know. But you have a shit journalist like Jim Acosta that gets thrown out of the White House uh, press briefing and, 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 and the Democrats lose their shit. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God, press freedom, press freedom, press freedom. But then a, a real journalist wants to publish something about your candidate with viable sources and and there's nothing from them just just silence if biden's supposed to be better than trump in terms of treatment of the press where is biden's response to how the intercept has treated one of their own there it, it doesn't exist And it really goes to show that that real journalists, uh, people with integrity that do reveal things about the powerful and do hold people that are so-called on their side uh, accountable and hold their feet to the fire, th- these people don't care about that. They don't care about truth and holding people's feet to the fire. I just watched Ro Khanna uh, make excuses for you know supporting someone like Nancy Pelosi when he is so adamantly for Medicare for all, so anti-war as a politician. He was on Jimmy Dore and he was making all these excuses for he stands for this, that, and the third, but he's going to support the party because they don't want dissenters. The Democratic Party does not want any sort of dissent. They don't want anybody actually looking into them and saying, you guys are doing a bad job because they are. They want the same thing as Donald Trump. They want blind followers this is uh, you know treading dangerous waters that this article was uh, suppressed at the intercept and I have to wonder what else was suppressed at the intercept because again it's like that's a publication that I do like they published the blue leaks Um, they've they've published uh, they've, they've supported a lot of whistleblowers So, you know, it, 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 it concerns me on a, on a uh, large level here that, um, that something like this would happen at The Intercept. Um, Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.